to read from the beginning of chapter three, which is called The Home Quarter, Material Culture and Status. In the summer of 1757, Sal watched someone she had known all her life die. Her feelings must have been mixed. Peter Jefferson, the man who died, owned her, her children, and likely her husband. The man wrote a will in which he legally transferred ownership of her black children to his white children. Her children would move to other plantations as their new owners reached majority. So the story of the, this woman, Sal, is, is one of the slaves from Shadwell who appears the most in the Jefferson's documents. And yet, uh, I, I don't even think we know the year that she dies. Ironically, within the plantation system that she knew, she and her children were being honored for their reliable work in learning and carrying on the cultural practices of their owners. As personal attendants and status symbols for the wealthy planter children, Sal and her children lived in better material comfort than many Virginians, regardless of their skin color or condition of servitude, which meant that they had status, albeit at the top of an underclass of enslaved people. I move spatially through the plantation in, in this book so that the chapter I be, begin uh, with the, this, the house, because one, one of the things I had to do was make a statement about you know, physically what was the Jefferson's house at Shadwell. And then, then I moved to the household, which is really the domain of Jane Jefferson. And then I moved to the domestic staff that, that, that's within that, uh, that household. Sal also had a physically intimate relationship with her owner's family. His children had probably suckled at her breasts as babes. She had practically lived in his house, nursing his children, often at his wife's side. This is a household that is there to train young Jefferson children to be gentry. And it's not a household of eight Jefferson children. It's a household of 15 or 16 children. As I said, you know, Thomas Jefferson inherits an adult. But 16 people learning to be servants and masters in this household. Uh, and that's a, that's a very different world than, than we've written about Jefferson being part of before. Her own children grew because of her skill with small children, despite having to spend long hours away from their mother. Sal taught her children how to be near and yet remain distant from this family that they would know so well. One of the, probably one of the, the biggest statements about the the material world there is, is that they had access to almost all of the manufactured goods available in colonial British America. That, that they have, if it's available on the, on the market, on the Atlantic market, they have it, um, you know, inc including the African slaves uh, that are part of that. Uh, but the Chinese porcelain, creamwares, uh, white salt glaze stonewares, uh, silver. Her son Jupiter would spend most of the next 43 years at the side of the planter's son, born in the same year, 1743, as this slave. Like his mother, Jupiter had an often intimate relationship with his owner, spending some of his years as the planter's valet. Part of the excitement for me was discovering that I could tell the stories of many of the people who lived at Shadwell that I could actually get at something close to a personal story about a, a slave we'd never been able to write about before. The other part then, the question that I had to grapple with was, was what does this mean about uh, how we think about Thomas Jefferson? I, I don't think we have a hard time imagining him coming from a world of, of just almost endless privilege. Uh, but to be able to, to say yes, in fact, uh, you know, the reason that he could study law was because there was someone brushing his coat behind him or someone else packing his bags, uh, which is how he could come to Williamsburg as a young man and, and be successful here. Uh, to put him firmly in this world where there is always someone else doing these things for him, uh, I think changes that. When Jupiter died, the planter mourned the death of his lifelong companion, and his comments reflected both his caring and frustration with, and his disapproval and respect for this person who had always been part of his world.